Hello there folks, so I've come down for an early morning fish. I've got some daylights in there, I'm fishing for mackerel. I got up the crack of dawn and uh, very, very, very peaceful indeed, lovely. But uh, I tell you what, like Jack Charlton passed away at the weekend and he was a far more clumplished uh, fisherman than me. Mainly river, I think. But um, I was thinking about just the, the Jack Charlton and how much of an archetype he was of the northeast. When I was a when I was a young lad growing up, my like, whole life was absolutely dominated by men like Jack Charlton. I mean, my dad, my dad's brothers, all of the kind of hard lads around the area. They even they even looked like Jack Charlton, and um, <clears throat> people find it hard to believe these days. But up until the late nineteen nineties, women were banned from walking in the the bars of the social clubs. If they, if women if a woman wanted to go in the social club. Uh, they had to be with. They had to go in the lounge and preferably with, with like uh, their their dad or their boyfriend or their husband or whatever. But women just weren't allowed to go into the 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 bar at all, because the air was always blue with bad language and you know, it was a bit rougher. And so they decided that it was just too much trouble uh, and they'd ban them from going in the bars. And the reason that they could ban them from going in the bars was because these men, um, they, they, they pretty much ruled. They, 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 even the social club itself, like they'd elect one of their own um, onto the committees. Uh, and it was, that amounted, I mean, you know, it's supposed to be a democratic process, but even that just amounted to having the most dominant of the men in the local area deciding what's what on the committee of the social club. And they always decided that women just wouldn't be allowed in the bars. And um, the point here, though, is that Looking back on it, you can see that the, the social fabric in, in the northeast, and, and it'll, I'm just using like my area as an example, I think it'll be typical in most of working class areas, maybe all areas. Um, and what you see is that the social fabric is, is kind of set by, by the, 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 the local men, the dominant men. And, and so in a way, like it, it actually genuinely was a patriarchy in that way. And, and you know, you, you get all of these, like the trad memes and everything. But in, actually, up until about the late 90s, I mean, things obviously just changed totally when Tony Blair got in. Um, but they, they would set the running. They were, uh, uh, if you walked into a pub, like uh, if you walked into the social club like I did when I was a young lad and I started going out, I had a bright green, like a, re a really like disgusting bright green shirt on. It looked like diarrhea. And I, and I had a, a white t-shirt on and I got so much shit that I just took it off and put it in the bin. So like if you are if you are like a you know a bit, if you are a bit of a fairy you'd get shit. If you are a girl and you are a slag you'd get torn down. So they had they had their own form of social control and it would be like deeply deeply conservative. Uh, they would all be described these days as racist. They'd all be described as homophobic. All of these like new trendy terms, they'd they'd tick all of these boxes, and you can see why they ended up um, being quite being actually despised by the left because they, they they you know it was labour and um, working class areas, and and eventually you know w w there's a whole huge culture war around that now. But what I think is interesting is that when I think of how reactionary my politics has turned out to be, I think it's because I kind of regret. Um, seeing that go, seeing that dwindle away, because what we see now is a new set of mores, a new set of uh, values, but they aren't uh, organic and they don't belong to a local area. Uh, the, the, it's, it's like stuff that's being drafted in, in PR companies and think tanks and lobby groups, and it's the same for everywhere as well. So the local flavour and the, the regionalism gets erased by it. And I think um, one of the reasons I've ended up having the kind of attitude that I have is because I'm kind of sad to see that go. Um, and you do, you get this kind of deep nostalgia, which is, can be like really crippling as well, especially for a right wing movement. Uh, there's a boat coming, I'll be back in a minute. One day a liberal lefty would find it completely baffling that somebody could be nostalgic for something like Ashington in the 1950s, because what they'd do is point at all of the differences. In, in material terms, so nobody, nobody is, and especially if you look back to as, as what it was like when Jack Charlton was a lad, um, 
nobody's dying down the pits anymore. Everybody's got a big flat screen TV. There isn't like three people queuing up to use a tin bath in the garden and the toilet isn't outside and the wallpaper is not coming off and people aren't getting the mould from the, the, the damp in their lungs and all of that. So they, they've actually got a, a, a strong argument there. But that's the only way they look at it. So then when if, and they don't seem to get any nostalgia at all because they're just viewing everything purely materially. But what's actually, what people like me, uh, I think, and people sort of right wing reactionary nationalist types, that for them, it, it's actually the, 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 the values, the values that have changed, which is this big, big culture war now. So it's as if the, the local uh, identity and social fabric all over the place as well. I'm, again, I'm just using the North East as an example, but wh what came with all the material wealth was um, like a blanket of something else being layered across the top of it. And so everything became standardised and everything became more efficient, but it's, it's as if we sold our souls and, and we didn't know about it. We were never informed on it. It was, a, yeah, we'll buy the products and we're happy that we don't have to go, you know, choke on coal dust anymore. But does that, like, does, why does that automatically mean that we are all fine with, like, gay marriage and all of these other things? Or, or mass, I mean, mass immigration, let's not even get started on that. But it was then assumed that you took one, so you're going to get the other. And that, that was never explained to anybody. It was forced. And when you say, well, this is the problem, we don't want that, like, then uh, we, we, we kind of, we've got this nostalgia for the past. They're going to point to the material things which have come with it. And interestingly, I've been watching the BBC uh, 90s drama, Our Friends in the North. It's actually very good. And this is, interestingly enough, it, it's set just before um, Tony Blair came in. Like that's, well, that's when it was made. It's set in the 60s. And they, they've got this thing where there's a, there's a strong element to it where they're looking at these kind of big men of the North. But they they have framed it in a way where it's all about corruption and they're all like filling their pockets and they're all um, on the take and are kind of cynical and and what they've done is is they've set them up. I haven't finished watching it yet, but what they seem to be doing is setting them up as if to say all of this uh, needs to change, all of this has to go. It's it's like this backwards patriarchal bullying hectoring. Uh, big bullshit as of the north, uh, and, and again, it, uh, it's strange because uh, Alan Armstrong's like the archetype of that in in our friends in the north, and it, it's he's uh, again that exact kind of person who who um, I I grew up with, and they could looking up to when I had to go and like, drag my dad out of the, the club on a on a Sunday morning or whatever, and I think it's a bit too much. I think it's kind of cynical. I think that it's a cope of the 90s because the kind of executives of the BBC you know, in connection with the Labour Party, they knew what was on the way. They, Tony Blair was already running the Labour Party and it was this, this sense that yeah we're going to end this once and for all and yeah they're going to be taken care of, they're going to get better houses um, and all of that but there's something else going to change and it's your complete way of uh, existing in the world in, in a social way. And so the, this is this is the big problem which which we're stuck with now, and and you know it, it has to be said that the the world that produced the the old kind of uh, domineering uh, patriarch in in the north that world was uh, forged in heavy industry and hard graft, and that's gone now. You know, like. You don't you don't get men like Jack Charlton uh, by generations of men stopping like stacking tampons in Tesco's and all of that kind of thing. You cannot help but be nostalgia. Well, it's nostalgia for a place and the being in the world. Um, more than more than like the mould on the walls. Catch you later, folks. <laughs>